Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Minecraft Bedrock Farm tutorial. This is a newly optimized version of the Drown Funnel that I first published almost two years ago. It's designed for maximum efficiency in the 1.19 version of Minecraft. The single module version gives 1,000 drowned per hour, the split density version for Sim 4 gives about 1,900, and the split density version for Sim 6 gives over 3,000. I imagine the first thing that jumps out as different about this version of the farm is that the funnel is made of TNT. Well, TNT has the same spawning properties as regular ice. It is spawnable and it allows spawns to intersect with it in spots where a solid block would block the spawn. The north and west sides of a funnel farm have to be made of either ice or TNT because mobs spawn on the northwest corners of blocks. I use TNT instead of ice in this farm because I've recently been playing in a desert spawn world where I have no source of ice within a couple thousand blocks, and I thought others in this situation might appreciate seeing a way to build a farm like this. I've also realized that TNT has an advantage over ice. It fully blocks light, and that means that with a TNT funnel you don't need to make a solid block roof extension sticking out from the edges of the farm, or extra thick walls to block the skylight. The single module farm is more efficient than another recently published round farm, both in terms of output over time and in terms of output per block cost. With a 22 by 22 spawn area, it uses over 30% fewer blocks in the funnel than the other farm, which is 26 by 26. And in that space, it delivers just over 1,000 drowned per hour. But wait, you say, doesn't the other farm produce 1,100 or 1,140, as is repeated several times in the tutorial? Well, no, it doesn't. The claimed rates for that farm are based on a 5-minute test, which is multiplied by 12 to get an hourly rate. There's a lot of problems with that procedure. Mathematically, it's very prone to random variation, and any fudging or carelessness about the timing gets multiplied when you multiply to find an average. To get a more accurate estimate of the rates for that farm, I set up an in-game timer and filtered storage in the world download and ran a 4-hour test. The timer there shows 14,840 seconds. Trident Killer is still timed correctly, so it has been working the whole time. And we have a full chest and another chest of, with 51 stacks. 51 stacks plus 59 for the other chest and hopper is 110, times 64 is 7,040 flesh plus the other 38, and the 7,078 divided by the seconds gives us a ratio. Multiply that by 3,600 seconds in an hour, that's 1717 17 flesh. Divide that by 2 flesh per drowned, and it's 858 drowned per hour. That's not quite 1,140. So what makes this farm more efficient? Three things. First, inset corners prevent dead spots in the water current. In a funnel with perfectly square levels, baby mobs in the corners experience no current, and sometimes they will stay there for a long time. Bringing the corners in like this takes care of the problem. Second, turtle eggs disrupt drowned's pathfinding. In the other farm, drowned could pathfind against the current and get stuck for periods of time. In my farm, that does not happen because of the turtle eggs. I had been told that floating turtle eggs no longer worked because of the improvements Mo Mojang made to pathfinding in the past year. However, I tested it, and floating turtle eggs do still work as long as they are not more than two blocks above a block that the drowned can path to. Third, the short drop to the trident killer shorts the kill time. The longer drop shaft in the other farm adds about 1.4 seconds to each drown's lifetime. In my farm they die faster, freeing cap space for more spawns. With the efficiencies I've just explained, you might wonder if a slightly larger funnel would produce more. The answer is yes, but I don't think it's worth it. If you extend the spawn area by one block on each side to 24 by 24, you'll get about 100 to 115 more drowned per hour. That may seem like a lot, but it's barely more than one drown per block added which is less than half the rate per block of the rest of the farm. And that's all you can squeeze out of a single funnel. A 26 by 26 spawn area has the same rates as a 24 by 24. If you really want more drowned, you should go split density, where multiple modules are separated as far as possible from each other to access more cap space. The two density version of the farm uses two double funnels, each with a 16 by 31 spawnable area. 16 by 31 is roughly the same spawnable area as the 22 by 22 single funnel. With two trident killers, they're a little more efficient separately than the single, and that helps to compensate for the overlapping density check areas on Sim 4. On Sim 6, you can build the sides of the two density version with a full four chunks in between and get over 2,000 drowned per hour. The five density version on Sim 6 uses five chunk line funnels, 
each with a 16 by 16 spawnable area. The smaller size of the individual funnels makes them more efficient. With a drowned farm, you have a few unique options for handling the loot. Do you want to get the most possible tridents, or just keep a limited number? Do you want to farm ink from squid, as well as the drops from drowned? And do you want to collect the experience that drops from killing mobs, or just burn it? The model farms in the world downloads showcase some of these options, as well as how to achieve them without using ice. So the compact and two density versions of the farm include my Nautilus Flux Trident Killer, which increases the number of trident drops by offering drowns a chance to lay down their arms for a shiny shell before they die. The five density version, on the other hand, uses a new piece of tech that I call a trident regulator, which collects a programmable number of tridents and then burns the excess along with the fishing rods. I designed the trident regulator because the number of tridents gets quite high and requires an insane amount of storage space if you AFK for a long time. The regulator allows you to save just what you want and also burns the fishing rods. All versions of the farm will produce a small amount of ink because squid spawn in the bubble columns around the drop chute. However, you can get more ink if you want by placing water sources on each level of the funnel. In the model farms, I've only set up the 5 density version to produce maximum ink. Here are estimates of the ink per hour that you might get in each version. The smaller versions of the farm deliver experience orbs to the player. The compact farm drops it straight down to the AFK platform, and the two density farm transports it using iceless water streams and an iceless water elevator. As you may know, XP orbs desync in flowing water so you can't see them moving down the stream. The pistons in the iceless elevator actually resync the XP orbs, and when they do, the orbs appear to teleport from the kill chamber. It's a neat visual effect that might make you want to build an iceless water elevator, even if you have ice available. The 5 density farm kills the XP by dropping it straight onto campfires. This option can be simpler if you don't care about getting experience from the farm. I also set up the 5 density farm this way because I wanted to try a different kind of iceless item transport, using hopper minecarts and fast loaders and unloaders to process the loot. Now let's get to the building. I'm going to go over material lists for each part and then show how to build each part, but you can pick and choose the way you want to put the farm together. If this gets confusing, use the chapter list in the description to jump just to the parts that you need to see. I have broken down the material lists for the funnel into parts so that you can select and use them based on how you want to do the build. The first two rows in this chest represent the materials for a one chuck 16 by 16 funnel. This is just for the funnel itself, the trident materials I've separated out and will show in just a minute. Now you could build a farm just with this and let the drowned fall and die of fall damage or be killed by a sword at the bottom. It's totally up to you. Now the next two lines show what you'll need to build the 22 by 22 spawnable area funnel in addition to what's shown for the 16 by 16. And the final line represents what you'll need for a 16 by 31 funnel with two drop shoots over and above what you need for a 22 by 22. So if you plan on building the two density version of this farm in its entirety, you would need two times what's shown in this chest. And if you plan on building the full five density version, you would need five times what's shown on the first two rows. In this chest, I have the materials to make one of the trident killers on the first two rows. The sticky pistons and one of the levers are for making an easy way to swap out the trident and re-throw it in case multiple players will be sharing the farm. The 13 blocks and 12 torches on the third line are to build a torch tower to connect an on-off switch to an AFK spot below the funnel, if that's how you're going to be building it. And the final two rows in this chest show the materials that are needed for adding a Nautilus flux system to the trident killer. The candles are there just as a dummy item for the item filters, and the rail and piston are temporary just for getting the hopper minecart in place. In this chest, I have the materials for loot delivery. The first set is for the water stream and item elevator for one side of the two density farm. The redstone is there to run the on off switch from the center to the, out to the trident killers. If you want to do water stream delivery on the five density farm, you'll need a little more than twice this amount of materials for each side. These items in the middle are what you need to put one of my minecart loaders underneath a module of the farm. The campfire there is for burning the experience orbs. The final set of items in this chest is what you would need for the rail line and redstone on-off switch line for one module of the 5-density farm. 
you would need a bit less than this if using a minecart line for the two density farm. In this chest, finally, are the materials you would need for building the full storage system in the five density world download. So this is for four minecart unloaders, the item filters, trident regulator, and a shulker loader for the rotten flesh. The location for this farm should be an ocean. Any ocean variant is fine. Be careful that your ocean really is an ocean and not a large part of a river, because the spawn rate for drowned is a lot lower in rivers. One way you can tell that it's an ocean is if it spawns cod. If you don't see any codfish, it may be a river. Once you have an ocean that is large enough for the scale of the farm you're going to build, you'll need to choose an AFK spot. On simulation distance 4, this needs to be 44 blocks above the highest solid block in the ocean floor or landmass nearby, and on simulation distance 6, it should be 128 blocks above. So on Sim 6, you're going to be, want to be up around Y190 or 200. On Sim 4, you may be as low as Y100. If you plan to build the single module farm, then there's no need to worry about chunk alignment at all. You can just build it anywhere over an ocean. But if you're going to build one of the larger farms, then chunk aligning is essential. For the two density farm, the AFK spot should straddle a chunk border, and you can AFK from the block on either side. And from that center line, there's going to be 32 blocks each way to the edge of the inside of the trident killer. So I've marked out with dark gray in this picture where the actual kill area inside the trident killer is, and it's from the edge of that to the AFK's 32 blocks. Then on each side, there's 13 blocks in between the kill areas of the trident killers. So if you build the trident killers first with this uh, spacing, then you can build the double funnel on top of those and everything will meet together the way it's supposed to. For the five density version, you can AFK anywhere in the center chunk uh, and then put four chunks in between the center and each side module. Each of the five modules should be aligned to fit exactly inside of a chunk with the trident killer exactly in the center of the chunk. For the build demo, I'm going to work with a single module above an AFK point, which is what you would do for the compact farm or the center module of the five density farm. To begin, count up 23 blocks from your AFK point for the floor of the trident killer. I recommend keeping vines or scaffolding here, and you'll want them especially if you plan on swapping the tridents out for different players. From your climbing point, build over by three blocks and then make a 4x4 four four pad. Then you'll want to arrange the pistons around that pad this way so that uh, you'll have one point pushing toward the uh, way that you came up and then the upside down stair next to the piston off to the right or left of that depending on which way you built it fill in with solid blocks and then we want to put solid blocks above each piston and an observer pointing into each solid block After we get the blocks in place, then we're going to put dust, redstone dust, in the corners in front of each observer. And that's a little slower than using something like rails, but it's fast enough for this trident killer, and it's the right speed for the Nautilus Flux system to work if you're going to be adding that. Now I'm sticking a lever here on the outside so that we can shut it off to put in the water. We're going to waterlog the upside down stair, the piston next to it, and then the piston that's pointing toward the exit. The water should flow like that. Then we can uh, seal the outside. So on the outside, put two blocks coming out at the exit and then a glass pane across and another glass pane under that. And you can see that glass pane connects to the solid block, so we want to replace that with another upside down stair. And this will allow the items and experience orbs to fall straight down when they come out of the trident killer. And it'll also block the water. Now at the exit, we want to use a repeater to keep the baby mobs in but not pointing into the piston like I just had it, but pointing back into the trident killer. That way it won't pick up any uh, power from the dust and lock things up. And with the trident killer built like this, the drops would go right over the repeater and down to the AFK platform. On the other side of the glass, we want to put a block and then two sticky pistons. 
and a black behind those sticky pistons with redstone dust on top of it and a lever on the side. That will allow us to open up the trident killer to swap out the trident or get in and out of the funnel while we're building. And then one more thing I neglected is to put buttons on the back of the waterlogged pistons so that the water doesn't spill out. The next step will be to install the on off switch and timing reset down at the AFK. So we want to come back down the vine, count over our three blocks, then four blocks, and then to the right, three blocks. And we want to go back one from there so that we can build a torch tower coming up on the far side of the trident killer from the exit. Uh, so put two blocks and then a button and lever. As you see there, then we're just going to tower up and replace every other block with a torch. Now we're ready to begin the funnel. I'm going to start with soul sand here on top of the walls of the trident killer. And this soul sand helps the drown to get over the edge so they don't get stuck on the edge of the water current. Then we can start putting the TNT up and to the outside in the funnel pattern. And in the corners, we're going to do a two by two square so that the corners will be inset, as I explained earlier in the video. It helps the baby mobs not to get stuck. After going around the first layer after the soul sand, then we can put in the uh, fence gates here to block the water flow in the middle. Go ahead and open those up. And then just to show you how the open and closing will work, it'll pull that soul sand back along with the observer at the trident killer exit. And that again, just allows us to get in and out very easily. And with that, we can finish out the TNT in the same pattern up uh, six more levels till we'll get a 16 by 16 spawnable area. Now at the top you're going to go two blocks high with the TNT to make the um, final upper wall like this. And then if you're going to be connecting this uh, with the two density funnel, uh, double funnel, then you'll leave the side and just build up from the other trident killer and they will connect in the middle. But if you're going to be building a single module, then just fill it in like I've done here. The next step will be the turtle eggs. And if you're building the larger than 16 by 16, you'll want to put the first set of eggs in from the corner by three blocks. Down in three and then up three, place an egg, and then you can break the blocks underneath. Now, since this is a 16 by 16 funnel though, we only need the eggs in the middle. We don't need extra ones out toward the sides. Um, you can place two blocks above the fence gates and then eggs on them. And I like to put four in a little up and down pattern like this. So two of them across from each other, two blocks above with two blocks between them and the fence gates, and then the other two up a block higher. The next step then will be to put in the water. And we want to start by making an infinite water source. We can just waterlog one of the fence gates and then the uh, soul sand across from it diagonally and it'll make a water source next to itself on the other soul sand and you can just keep drawing from that to water the whole thing. Now if you want to farm the maximum squid from this funnel then you'll need to place water source blocks on every level uh, but it's important that you do it in the pattern I'm showing here where you leave uh, one block open by each corner and that uh, prevents the water from forming sources all the way across and flooding the whole thing. So you would continue around in the pattern like I'm showing here, skipping one block at each corner. 
Now, if you don't care about the squid and you just want to get the um, loot from drowned, then there's no need to do that and you can just do the water at the top. If you're doing this ink from a squid, then it's important also when you get to the top, don't put sources up there. Uh, you want to leave that open because you need to place water at the second level at the top against the outer wall. Um, and that's to make it too deep so that the spawn rate for drowned is the maximum. And when we're done putting in all the water, we can take the water out of the open fence gate that we have been using for the infinite source. The final step in building the funnel will be to add a roof. I'm going to make the roof out of tinted glass here, but if you want to use uh, something like slabs on top of the actual TNT walls to spawn proof, that's fine. You only need a um, darkening but surface spawning block in the middle. Tinted glass works great for that. If you want to use a two layer thick ceiling of ice with buttons on top, that works too. And so does a leaf roof that would be four blocks above the height of the water. But with the ceiling filled in, then this farm is ready to run. So we can throw our trident in the trident killer and close the trident killer up. Uh, then if you ha do have solid blocks here on the outside, you'll want to spawn proof them. I'm just gonna lay some carpet down. If you uh, use glass blocks here, no need to worry about that. Here it is from the AFK spot. You can see the drown get killed up there. Here comes our loot. We have a working farm. Now the next thing I'm going to show is how to add my Nautilus Flux system underneath the Trident Killer. The first step will be to build a working platform about six blocks underneath where we were before. And then we're going to move over to the side with the upside down stair and build a dropper elevator, which will pump the Nautilus shells up into the kill chamber. To build this, you'll need to take out the block that's underneath the upside down stair. And then I recommend building or placing some blocks coming down from the corner next to that so that you can place droppers against them. So we'll need four droppers pointing upward into the stair. Now from here we can take out the temporary support blocks and we're going to put a hopper pointing into the bottom dropper from the side of the where the loot comes out of the trident killer and then another hopper into the side of that hopper and another hopper behind that one. And I'm going to come to the back side here and I need to place a hopper above our third hopper pointing backwards toward the trident killer. And I'm going to have another hopper above that, but I will also need a dropper pointing down under the glass like you just saw, and then you can place the hopper into it. Now then on the back hopper, at the lowest level, we're going to build our item filter circuit. This only needs to be two redstone dust long on top, uh, not three because it doesn't need to be overflow protected since we're not doing a, uh, a, another filter next to it. So two dust on there, a repeater going into the block underneath with a torch on it under the bottom hopper, and a comparator reading the hopper above. Now in that hopper, you can put however many nautilus shells you have and uh, then dummy blocks to fill the rest of it. So that'll be our shell filter. Now all of the loot is going to come into the top hopper there. And uh, if it's a Nautilus shell, it'll be filtered down. If it's not, it'll go into the dropper. The dropper is going to drop the rest of the loot downward to the FK. So I've got an under uh, upside down stair underneath the dropper to align the drops coming out. Then I'm going to build an auto dropper circuit coming off of that with a comparator pointing into a block and then a repeater to uh, amplify the signal and dust coming back around to the comparator. Now I want to leave the space next to the dropper open so that um, experience orbs can still fall straight down. So I'm going to put a target block and a torch right here and that uh, the orbs will fall right through the torch. The torch will activate the dropper whenever there is something in it. So just like this with these bricks, they come dropping down and we have a good system. Now then we want to go ahead and spawn proof any blocks that are open 
and we can put a, another block here in the back to fill that in. Then we'll um, work underneath again to complete the circuitry. Coming off of the Nautilus shell filter, we need a couple of redstone dust and another target block. This will activate the dropper elevator. On top of the target block is a torch, then another solid block, and then a piece of dust. Then on the other side of the filter, we need to put a couple of blocks to support a repeater and another piece of dust. And what this will do is um, shut off the filter every time one shell comes in, so it will only ever pull in one shell at a time, and each time it pulls in one shell, it will pulse the dropper elevator uh, to send a shell back into the filter. Now we're going to move up top inside the Trident Killer for the final piece of this system, which is to embed a hopper minecart to collect the loot. I'm blocking off the water here with solid blocks, and then I'm going to put a piston up at the soul sand level uh, to eventually push a block down to embed the hopper minecart. Now the hopper minecart is going to go directly over the hoppers we placed before, uh, and that means we also need to move the glass panes back so that experience orbs that flow over we'll be able to fall on the other side of the dropper. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the sides uh, next to these panes with solid blocks, and then I'll replace the upside down stair on top of the dropper so that the glass panes don't connect on the side where we want the orbs to fall through. So you can see right there the orbs are going to fall down on the other side and the water is going to flow over. Now to place the um, hopper minecart, we're going to need to use a rail, and uh, I'm going to temporarily take out these blocks on the side because we'll need to place the rail and then break it before we push a block into that space. So you can just place a working platform block against the side of the hopper below, place the hopper minecart, then carefully break the rail, and then build the blocks back up. Need one more down there. Now we can place two blocks above that and activate the uh, piston. Now be careful when you activate this piston that you're not also activating the TNT because we don't want to blow up the farm. But with the blocks pushed down there then we can take out the piston, uh, make sure those fence gates are open as you just saw. I accidentally shut one with the lever. Take out the other blocks that were blocking the water, replace the redstone dust on the side, and then uh, that system is going to pull out any uh, items that come across. Hopper minecarts actually can grab a stack of items every other game tick, so it's unlikely that we'll miss any of the loot that's uh, where the water is flowing over. Now we do need to replace the repeater just like we had before to stop baby mobs there, um, and as I said experience orbs will flow right over all the pieces in place now we can take out the uh, platform under here or you could just spawn proof it if you like if you want to leave it there for access later for any reason and this system is ready to run uh, the only other thing you may want to add on here would be some light uh, to, to limit the amount of flashing from the redstone torches if you put a soul lantern right there under the target block then you shouldn't have too much flashing light visually when you look up at it If you're going to be building more than one module of this farm, you'll probably want to move the loot rather than letting it fall straight down. I'm going to show how to do this with an iceless water stream and with an iceless uh, minecart loader and unloader. You can add an iceless water stream to this iceless drown funnel in one of two ways. The first would be to build it underneath where we've already set up the loot to fall down. You can start with a water trough right here and the items and XP will fall into it and move along. I actually prefer, though, to do a more compact attachment that brings the loot out higher up. We can do that by building a stream right under the Trident Killer access switch. So we'll take out these blocks, move the target block back so that it touches the dropper and activates it directly without the need of a torch. And we can extend the trough, sidewalls, and we will take out the glass, take out the stair, and take out the block behind the stair and the minecart as well. We're going to replace the hopper minecart with just a regular hopper, which may miss a few items, but it'll still catch most, and it'll allow the experience to drop right into the stream behind. Then we just need to flip the dropper upside down so it puts the items into the water. And then you can see it popped that dropper right out. Uh, we can 
put a few blocks in here to cut off that excess water flow, let it flow down again more smoothly. You'll also want to waterlog the block right above the dropper so that uh, items will move out more quickly. Now from the target block, if you're doing the split density, uh, the two density version of the funnel, then these trident killers will be uh, far enough apart that you want to go three blocks further than the target and then make the turn like you can see me doing here. Then we will come out toward the direction that our AFK would be in. This will put the stream exactly in the middle between the two trident killers. And you want to put a glass block in the middle to catch the loot so that it falls down and changes direction without sliding back and forth. For the rest of the stream, you'll want to count out segments at most six blocks long and then add another drop. Any longer than six blocks and the items will slow down at the end. I'm building a short stream here just to show how to make the parts, but you'll want to count out 32 blocks for the two density farm on Sim 4 or longer on higher Sim distances. The very last segment needs to be exactly six blocks long for the iceless elevator, so you may need to put an odd length segment somewhere in the middle. Once you have your trough built, just put one water source underneath the glass pane at the end and the water will flow the whole way down. At the end of the water stream, you'll need a piston at the floor level to make the iceless water elevator. Then put a string in the stream in front of where the piston is, an observer watching the string to the side, and then you want a block behind the observer with a torch on it, a block next to the piston, and then a redstone dust supported by another block next to that. It's going to look like this, and whenever an item comes down the stream, it'll hit the string, um, power the, uh, activate the observer, which will then cause the piston to go down to catch the item and push it back up. Around the sides where the piston's pushing up, you'll need to uh, make a, an enclosed column, which you will then fill with water sources. So here's what it looks like in action. We'll throw the item in the water stream. When it comes down, it will double pulse the piston, but it will reliably be lifted up into the water column and float upwards. To handle items coming from the other side, you'll need to duplicate this little contraption with the redstone on the opposite side of the stream. When you're done, make sure to spawn-proof the walls of the water stream with light or something like carpet or slab. I recommend using one side wall for a redstone line because remember you do need to reset the trident killers whenever you reload them, and you need to be able to do that from the central AFK so that you don't unload one side or one module while you're resetting the other. Here's a flyover of the redstone line in the two-density demo world. To show how to add a minecart loader to the funnel, I'll go back to the build without the Nautilus Flux. You can use a campfire to burn the XP orbs and a hopper directly under that to catch the items. Next, put a chest in front of the hopper to buffer the item flow while the minecart is being unloaded at the central storage. Reposition the hopper to point into the chest and then place a hopper under the chest pointing down and two at the back pointing forward. This will enable double speed loading of the chest minecart. Then build down by two blocks under the hoppers so that you can set up the rails. You'll need an upward slanted detector rail under the front hopper, and to place that you can temporarily take out the back hopper and place a rail up on top of the block in that position. Then place a temporary block above the detector rail so that you can reposition the hopper behind it, and place another block in front to catch the chest minecart. On the far side, bring some blocks over next to the rails so that you can place a sticky piston pushing against the block that's holding the chest minecart. Then place an observer pointing into the block that's next to the sticky piston. Behind the block that the detector rail leans on, you'll need a comparator with three redstone dust going up to the observer. Then next to the first comparator, you'll need another dust, and then another comparator. 
to reduce the signal of the first. The first comparator should be on subtract mode. The second should be reading signal strength 3. I'm going to use a full cauldron for that. This circuit will release the chest minecart when it has about 11 or 12 stacks of items in it. You won't want it to have much more than that so that it doesn't take too long to unload at the other end. In the 5 density demo farm, I have a second observer pointing into the sticky piston, which is connected to the redstone line that is used to turn the trident killer on and off. This allows you to recall the minecart whenever you want to, and also to flush any items out when you begin or end the session. In the final part of this video, I'm going to show how to build the storage system that's in the 5 density version of my farm. So the first thing we'll need is to extend a minecart track to a central point where uh, the different modules will all deliver their loop. And you'll want a platform about 10 blocks below where the minecart track comes in. With rails, it will look like this. You need enough powered rails to move the minecart, and at the end you want two powered rails with a regular rail just before them so that we can stop the minecart from unloading. Now for the hopper layout to unload the minecart, you want to have three hoppers pointed toward the center like this. That will allow the minecarts to be unloaded at double hopper speed, and you want to repeat that from three of the sides. Now, you might think that we'd want to bring all the loot down in the center, but that would create a bottleneck where a single hopper was unloading it. So what we're actually going to do is bring the loot down off to one side. Um, on the final side, we want to point the uh, outer hopper inward, but then have downward pointing hoppers like I'm showing here. And then at the central position, we want those hoppers to point to the side into our offset downward facing hoppers. And then below these, we want two hoppers pointing into each other. So with this setup, um, no matter which direction a minecart is coming in, it will be unloaded at double hopper speed and the items will move at double hopper speed down to the bottom here where they're going to be evenly distributed between those two hoppers. Then to make the minecart unloaders, I'm going to use honey blocks. The uh, minecarts will go into the honey blocks so that they straddle both hoppers on each track. Then on the outer hopper, we're going to have a comparator reading it, pointing into a block that has a torch that then powers another solid block above, which powers redstone dust next to it, which turns on the rail. So whenever the hoppers are unloading the minecart, the powered rails will shut off and trap it in there um, inside the honey block. Then you can repeat that around the center like I've done here for as many modules as you're building. With the unloaders made, we can go down below and now work on the trident regulator and the filters. So we're going to place some temporary blocks down and to one side of our bottom hoppers and then place four hoppers pointing outward all in the same direction. Beside the hoppers along the bottom, we want to make a two by four platform on each side. Now I'll be replacing some of these solid blocks with glass in a few minutes, uh, but we're gonna start with just the solid blocks uh, to build on. Comparators, comparators will read the uh, second to bottom hopper on each side, dust coming around to uh, a torch on the back, and those torches will keep the bottom hoppers locked unless there's an unstackable item. So this is going to set up both sides as unstackable item filters. The stackable drops will come out the next to the bottom filter here into these dropper um, pipes. Now to make the droppers all fire at the same time, we need to wire each side differently. On one side, we're going to have an observer, and we need to replace a couple of the solid blocks that are beside and below the observer with glass. And then we need a repeater reading the dust that directly comes out of the comparator in order to um, amplify the signal. On the other side, put a block in front of the comparator, another block, and then glass, and then another solid block. And we're going to run redstone on top of those in the same pattern as the other side with a repeater amplifying the signal from the comparator, dust going back to the comparator, and on this side we also want that dust on top of the dropper. So the signal is going to come around here 
uh, create a clock circuit with the comparator every time an item comes through and then the droppers will be powered from both sides so that they can all fire at the same time without items getting stuck. Underneath we've got a dropper coming forward on the side that doesn't have the observer and from the side with the observer we have a dropper pointing sideways into the other dropper. Since that dropper is next to a glass block we need to power it separately from the torch like this and then the forward pointing dropper is going to feed into our trident regulator. For the regulator, we need a piston under the glass on one side and next to the glass under the observer on the other. Then on the observer side, place a, a cauldron, which will have lava in it. And on the not observer side, place the dispenser facing downwards. Then we need two blocks of open space and a solid block with a weighted pressure plate at the bottom. If you're going to be saving just a few tridents, up to 15, you can use a golden pressure plate. If you want to save up to 140 tridents, you use an iron pressure plate. Now, we need comparators on each side reading the signal strength of this pressure plate in order to um, switch between the dispenser and the lava cauldron for whether we're saving or destroying the tridents. So on the one side, I've got the comparator pointing to a torch and that um, is going to make sure that the piston on that side retracts to allow the um, lava cauldron to be pushed over. On the other side, we're going to have the comparator pointing into a little torch tower, which will activate the piston on that side to push the lava cauldron over when there are enough items on the uh, pressure plate. To program the number of uh, tridents that we want to save, we'll need to move around the back side and put another comparator reading a chest or other container to um, limit the, com the comparator that's pointing toward the uh, cauldron side of the regulator. So here with just a few items, uh, or non-stackable items in that chest, this will now react to or allow two items on the pressure plate before uh, shifting the cauldron over just like that. So to program this to save more tridents, you will just add more stacks of items to the chest that the comparator in the back is reading. Now to take care of the fishing rods that will come through, uh, we can put another dropper into a lava cauldron underneath the um, pressure plate that catches the tridents. And we're going to set up a hopper mine cart here to catch the uh, fishing rods, but we also need to clock this dropper. So I'm going to build a standard auto dropper circuit here into the floor. So that's a block behind the dropper, comparator reading through the block, pointing into a repeater that then powers this redstone dust line that leads to the dropper. So if I put an item in the dropper, it gets pushed into the lava. Then um, directly underneath the block with the pressure plate on it, we need a hopper. And then we're going to put a rail on top of that hopper, fill in the floor here first, put a rail on top of that hopper and then a hopper mine cart on the rail. And that will pull through any items that don't get fired by the dispenser, which for this farm is just fishing rods. With the Trident regulator finished, we can move up and work on the um, item filters for the stackable items. So we're going to have a water stream come off from the droppers and then move along these honey blocks to uh, where the hoppers underneath the honey blocks will grab the items. So we need to encase this in blocks. I'm using glass to make it visible, but you can use solid blocks here if you want. And we want to put uh, blocks above where the droppers spit items out because sometimes they spit them wildly and we don't want them flying out of the stream. And when you put the water in, it should come uh, all the way down to the next to last honey block. So you want one more honey block than water there. And on the end, we're going to put in a contraption that I call a filter backwash. You may know that uh, item stream filters are not 100% reliable in bedrock because of a bug that makes items sometimes get skipped. And to work around that, we're going to have the items flush backwards across the filters if they reach the end of the stream. So it's a dispenser pointing up with a pressure plate on it. A golden one works well there. And then a torch off the dispenser powering the honey block that 
powers the dust on this solid block here. Solid block, we're going to put a trapdoor on the side of, and then the observer there watches the trapdoor and powers the block next to the dispenser. So when we throw an item in, it'll move along the honey blocks. When it hits the end, water gets dispensed, and when it comes off that pressure plate, the water um, gets pulled back in again. Now for the filters themselves, I'm going to start with the Nautilus shell filter and pipe those shells into another lava cauldron. So I'll put a lava cauldron under the first honey with a dropper pointing up into it, uh, glass behind the regulator piston there, and a solid block next to the dropper. So that way the um, circuit that powers the unstackable filter will always be running that dropper to burn the uh, Nautilus shells because they don't have much use. Then we want the hoppers underneath the honey, like I just placed there. Um, one each facing into the glass for the copper and the ink. And then the final one should point straight down for the rotten flesh because we're going to make a double hopper speed filter for that for the flesh. Then you'll need to place solid blocks, um, target blocks, and glass in the arrangement that you see here. Dust will go on the um, blocks and the glass in the back, and the comparators are going to be reading the filter hoppers through the solid blocks that I placed at the top here. Underneath, we can go ahead and put the piston on top of the target block for the double speed filter, and then torches on the side of the target blocks pointing up into solid blocks for the uh, regular speed filters. Then we'll put in our filter items. Um, a stack of the item you're filtering, and then something to bounce out the items that you don't want. The Rotten Flesh filter is going to get the same stack of items and row of dummy items. It's going to operate on the same signal as the other filters, even though it works differently. We need a hopper pointing out to the side attached to that sticky piston, and then when this comparator up here on top of the piston um, produces a signal strength of three, it'll push the uh, dropper over instead of turning off a torch. On the front, place your chests, and these chests are just for the copper and the ink. The shells are going off to the other side, the flesh is going off uh, to a shulker loader. Now for the shulker loader, the first step will be to make sure you have glass under the honey block next to our backflow, then a hopper under that glass, and a dropper under the hopper and then we need a, a hopper going into the side of that dropper. This will allow the dropper to be loaded at double hopper speed whenever the flesh is being filtered down. Next, place some dummy blocks uh, a few blocks below the um, dropper we just placed, and then we need a dropper line coming in from the side, dropper facing up, and a dispenser facing up. So this spot on top of the dispenser is where the shulker boxes will be placed and loaded. Into this dropper on the side is where the empty boxes will come in. You can go ahead and load some of them in now if you like. And then under our other chests, I'm going to put an output chest for the uh, shulkers full of rotten flesh. A hopper will point into that chest from the side, and all the shulker boxes that get broken will end up in that hopper. Now behind our dispenser, you go ahead and place three solid blocks, break the middle one, and place an observer pointing into the box next to the dispenser. Piston on top of that block and a comparator behind the piston pointing into a solid block from which you will hang a bell. This circuit will break the shulker box whenever it's full. And then underneath the observer, place another observer going down and another observer pointing back toward the dropper and dispenser line underneath. And that will replace an empty shulker box when a full one gets broken. Now we can continue encasing the um, box spot there. I'm going to put a uh, trapdoor that flips outward on the front, so you can close that to make sure nothing flies over the range of the hopper. And you can open it to actually access the shulker box while it's being loaded if you want to see how full it is. When we put glass on the other side like this, we'll have a fully enclosed area. So this is going to be a lossless loader. It's impossible for a box to go anywhere but into the hopper when it breaks. On the side, we're going to set up a circuit to power that dropper uh, on a four game tick clock. So I'm using a clock invented by Magelico, 
which has an observer pointing down into a piston and then another observer pointing up that watches the piston fire, powers the solid block on top, which then powers a repeater on four ticks. And this takes a second to get up to full speed, but when it gets going, that's a four game tick clock. And you can see how fast it's uh, pumping out the rotten flesh in that spot right now. Now we want to make sure that this doesn't spill rotten flesh into empty space whenever a shulker box is being broken and replaced. So to do that, we attach another solid block off the back here with a uh, slab, which the slab will act as a diode, only allowing the signal to go one way. And then when a box is being broken, that comparator is going to power this dust line constantly for a few ticks long enough to replace the next box before it starts um, spitting out rotten flesh again. You can put a button on the back which can be used to uh, cycle out the box and replace a new one and a lever on the side can be used to shut off this circuit. There's, it's not necessary to shut that off when you relog or reload the area but um, you can if you want to. The final um, piece is to power a solid block on the side here so that this comparator will only turn on when it is reading a full box. And that dust does look like it's going up the, uh, through the target block, as I was pointing to, but it's actually not. That's a visual glitch. So let's take this rotten flesh that came through while we were building, and you can see how fast this loads the shulker box. Now, if you're building smaller than the five density version of this farm, you probably won't need a storage system this big. It would be enough to build just uh, one of the unstackable filters going into the Trident regulator. Uh, but if you want the five density version, this um, system will cover it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you enjoy the farm.